My name's Judith Hope, the puppet maker. I was going to be bringing my walkabout puppets, the Keeper's Nests, to Beverly Puppet Festival this year. They are two giant magpie puppets who roam the streets in their rickety ramshackle walking nests, collecting the secrets of people they meet. I was also going to be delivering a masterclass called Winged Creatures, teaching the making of flying puppets. Unfortunately, this can't happen this year, but instead I'm going to show you how to make your own flightless bird puppet in a tutorial called Dance of the Nestlings. So I thought I'd go in the opposite direction to my Winged Creatures masterclass that I would have been teaching at the festival, and instead I chose to make a flightless bird. However, you will be free to adapt this structure in any way you like. So the puppet that you make doesn't need to be a penguin. You can create to your own designs. If I turn her sideways, you can see that her body is made up from a series of discs. She has a rod in her head here and her feet controlled by this rod at the back. This is everything I use to make my puppet. So we have some cardboard box card, cereal box card, kitchen tin foil, some string and or some rubber bands, two bottle tops, these are optional, I use these for the eyes, two paper clips, some Pritt stick glue, black permanent marker if you have one, a full length pencil or a reasonably long pencil. This is going to become the rod in your puppet's head, which is why it needs to be fairly long. Some sticky tape, either parcel tape or cellar tape is fine. A pair of old rubber gloves, I use these for decorating so they're not essential. A black bin bag and an old white carrier bag. This is the equipment you will need for the make. A pair of scissors, might be helpful to have a large pair and a small pair, but it's not essential. A bradle, or you could use a nail, skewer, knitting needle, anything sharp and pointy to make a hole. A pencil, this time it is for drawing. A ruler, and either a glass bottle or a jam jar, or some kind of round receptacle uh, that doesn't have a handle. These are some optional tools and materials which I didn't use but if you have them they might be useful. So we have a glue gun, some sharp nose pliers, some acrylic paint, compass, some Yoohoo glue, some black sewing elastic. Going to start by making our puppet's head. To do this, we use strips of cardboard which we're going to wrap around your bottle or jar. So the width of your cardboard strips will partly depend on the size of bottle or jar that you're using. Just as a guide, these are the sizes I used for mine on a bottle of this size. It's important to remember when we're working with cardboard that it has this corrugated grain within it. So when you cut your strips, it's very important that the grain comes downwards. That way, we'll get this nice flex and bend to wrap around the bottle or jar. If you use it the other way, like this, it will give no flex or bend. So sometimes in making, that's what we need. Other times, we need this flex. So make sure the grain is coming downwards. The two larger strips need to wrap around the bottle twice. If your cardboard box isn't big enough to make a strip that long, you can make two smaller ones and overlap them. The narrower strip here, this needs to be about 30 to 35 centimetres long. Again, it could be smaller pieces which we join together later. Next, we're going to take our longer strip 
which I've already measured around my bottle and it fits nicely twice round. Now I'm going to glue along the overlapping piece so that we can wrap it round. And press that down nice and firmly and then it's a good idea to tape over your joins just to make sure it's nice and secure. And then we've done that, just slide it off the bottle and we've got one ring like this. I'm then going to repeat the same thing with the middle size strip. I'm going to wrap it round twice, glue it down, secure with tape. We now have both of our cardboard circles. The wider one is going to be equivalent to the equator around your puppet's head and we're going to slot the smaller one inside like this to make this kind of shape. So fit that one inside, mark the overlapping points and then glue in between those markers and then put the circle back inside and press together. As before, it's always a good idea to take the joins. So when you're finished, it should look something like this. Next we need to make some wire loops which will go underneath our puppet's head to attach the head onto the body. So to do this, I'm going to use paper clips for the wire. So the first thing we need to do is to unwind our paper clip and push it into a straight line, or an almost straight line, like this. So I'm going to do that with both paper clips. Now at this point, if you have pliers and you'd rather use pliers, you can do so. I find it's actually okay just using your fingertips. So we need to make a loop in our wire. So we need to go to roughly the middle point, fold it round, cross those two over so we have a little loop and twist our wire like this. And then we want these two pieces to be almost side by side. So it looks like that. I'm going to do the same with the second paper clip. And we have our two little loops like this. Now you need to decide where you're going to place them. This wider part being the equator around your puppet head. The first one needs to go under here in the middle. So before we make a hole, I'm going to reinforce the cardboard with a strip of tape. This is because the wire constantly rubbing at the cardboard will eventually wear it away. If we stick some tape, we've just strengthened that a little bit. So I'm going to put another piece on the inside. Then I'm gonna take my braddle or your nail or whatever you're going to use to make holes and I'm going to make my hole in the middle here. So it's in the middle of the strip crossways, roughly in the middle under here. And we take one of your wire loops, going to push it through that hole like so. Once it's through we're going to open out those two pieces of wire so 
so they will sit on the inside like this. Then we need to make a second one about a centimeter towards the back, a centimeter away from the first. So we'll make a hole, push the wire through. Once they're open out like this, you can tape over the pieces of wire, hold them in place. We don't want them spinning around when the puppet moves. So our wire is covered, can't move, and we have two little loops sticking out at the back. It's now time to put the rod into our puppet's head. So for the rod, we're going to use our full length, nice and sharp pencil. So we're going to go from the back, remembering that when you put your two wire loops in, this one here is in the central position, this one is a centimetre behind, therefore this is the back of our puppet's head. So what we need to do, take a braddle or your sharp instrument and make a hole through the middle of all these layers of cardboard. Now you're going to need to move it around and make the hole a little bit bigger for the pencil, but it is important that our pencil is really snug when we put it through, so we don't want to make too big a hole. Take the bridle out and wriggle your pencil through that hole. It does take some force, but it needs to be nice and tight through the cardboard. When we've got it through there, push it forwards, keeping the pencil nice and straight and level, and then just push the nib into the cardboard in front like that. So it's nice and snug. Then just take some pieces of tape and tape your pencil down onto the cardboard so there's no chance that it can move when you're puppeteering. I'm going to do the same on the inside here where the pencil nib goes into the cardboard. So when you're finished it's getting much more exciting you've got the shape of a little head on a rod. So now we're going to use our thinner strips of card and for these we're going to glue and tape them into position so that one goes over the top like this and the other one will go underneath like so, so it fits underneath the wire loops. So minus 16 centimetres long but cut yours to whatever length you need. Um, this one, this is just single thickness. We're not doing this double like the other strips. So slot them in place, mark them with a pencil and then glue them ready to attach. As we've done before, I'm going to tape the join. And that's our one over the top. I'm going to do the same with the one at the bottom. All these gluing steps, if you have a glue gun, you might want to use it. The print stick works fine, and it's what I used on my puppet. Glue gun in the long run will probably hold it better. It will also be a much quicker bond. So it's just an option if you have one. Now we need to fill in these empty spaces in our puppet head to make it into a solid shape. So we're going to do this using tape. So I'm just going to take some large pieces of tape and stick them across 
all of the gaps. So by using just tape over the spaces, we don't add any extra weight to our puppet. It's a quick way of filling those gaps without adding anything more substantial, which would make it heavier. So I'm gonna stick those down and then you just continue all around your puppet head until it's covered. And then, here's one I made earlier, it should look something like this. So obviously it's not a perfect sphere, but it's going to be covered in feathers and decoration. So that's all we need for now. We now need to make this mask shape for our puppet's face. So I have my little model here, just demonstrating the shape for you before I show you how to make the template. So this is in two parts. This background piece goes on first and then her beak is separate. We'll make that and stick it on. Okay, so this is the shape which we need to fit onto our puppet head. Good idea to roughly measure against your puppet head before cutting to work out what size will suit. The best way to make your template is to take your scrap paper, fold it in half, draw half, and then you can cut around that to make sure your mask shape is nice and even. So when you have your template, you're just going to lay it onto a piece of the cardboard box card, remembering what we said earlier about the grain. So we don't need a flex or a bend, but we do need a crease in the middle. So we need the grain of the cardboard coming down this way. And then your template will fit on like this. Now for mine, I covered it in a piece of the white carrier bag. You might be using fabric or something else to cover it. But if we take our Pritt stick glue and glue all over. So I'm sticking it down onto a piece of plastic bag making sure I have plenty sticking out all around the edges. I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim so that I have about roughly a centimeter, I think, around the edge. I'm going to make a cut there and a cut there, just going inwards to where our fold or crease is. Then I'm going to glue around the edge. You can glue onto your carrier bag or your fabric, but I find it's easier to do it onto the cardboard. And then we're just gonna fold this under. Because this is nice and thin, I can overlap it easily. If you were using thicker fabric, you might need to cut some notches around the edge here to allow for the overlap. When we've finished that, we have our mask shape basic covering. Now we need to make some feathers to stick onto our puppet's head. I used some of this rubble sack. This is thicker and stronger than the standard bin bag, but it's okay if you don't have this. So there's two ways of doing it. You can either cut strips like this to stick on or you can go with individual feather shapes and glue them on one at a time. Partly depends how patient you are uh, and probably how much of a perfectionist you are. But I'm going to show you how to do both of those. So we're going to start with a strip and we're just going to fold it concertina style all the way along. And I'm going to hold it tightly together and cut through all layers. Just cut out a teardrop shape. I'm 
you let go of them, you will have lots the same size and shape if you want to stick on individually. If you want to make the strips, we just do the same thing, fold concertina style, cut up towards the fold, but leave some fold here because that's what's going to link all your pieces and then cut down from the fold to a point and when we open it out, all join together. And that way we would be able to overlap the strips like so on the head when we glue. Now we need to attach the feathers onto the head. So I'm going to be doing it with a Pritt stick, which I used on my puppet. If you do have some of this, some Yuhu glue, it's a good idea to use it. It is stronger, but it's fine if you don't, because as I say, this was on my puppet. So I'm going to show you first with the strips and then we'll do the individuals. So with the strips, you just need to thoroughly glue all the way along. And then you need to start at the back, low down on your puppet head. So I'm going to place mine there and press it down. And then it's a question of overlapping each strip. And line it up, stick like that, so that these feather shapes go into the gaps left by the previous strip. And goes over the top of that. And then you just continue moving upwards and you can go around the sides until all of your puppet head is covered. So this is how we stick the individual feathers on. It's worth saying that whichever option you choose, it's a good idea to cut out lots when you do your cutting. It gets a little bit irritating if you stick a few, then you have to stop and cut a few more and carry on. So I would advise cut yourself a nice big pile of these or the strips. It saves you time in the long run. So for these, we're just going to glue that upper part and in the same way we're going to start low down at the back and press them on and with these they just overlap slightly in rows like this. You might find even if you choose to go with the strips you might still need a few of these individual feathers fill in some of the smaller gaps. And we start the row above and these just overlap in the spaces like this. Just clearing the top bit so that we have a pointy bit sticking out, adding a nice bit of texture. So this one is almost covered. You can see this is the bottom with the loops here. I just missed off these two parts here because this is where we're going to glue our mask on in our next step and it's easier to glue down to a flat surface than to try and glue over all of these feathers but otherwise I've stuck my feathers all over here so then we're ready to attach the mask attaching this mask or face shape is fairly simple we're just going to fold it along this center crease and you can either glue onto the face shape or onto your puppet head or a little bit of both. I'm going to do both to make sure the areas where it makes contact is very well glued. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to put a little bit on those empty spaces where there's no feathers and then Line it up carefully, and when you're happy with that, press down. So we're now going to make a beak shape, which needs to be roughly like this. So in the same way that we made the face shape, 
best way to draw a template is to fold your scrap paper in half and then draw half of your beak shape and cut it out. And you can draw around your template onto the cereal box card. So my cereal box is sort of off-white colour. If you needed to change the colour, you could always stick paper over the top. So you need to do that twice. I have another one here, which I did earlier. So we've got two matching beak shapes, which fold in the middle. And we need to glue these two together. So we're gluing the printed side so that we can keep the plain side facing outwards. together, trim away any difference and then you can decorate this with felt pen or permanent marker, coloured pencils or even paint. Now to glue the beak on we just put plenty of glue on these end pieces here then press it onto the face card like this. To make the eyes I used two bottle tops. Um, you could also use buttons or drawing pins or scrunched up paper, a bit of paper mache, whatever you like. For these I used them this way round and I drew on the inside. You could, if you preferred, use them the other way. So I just took my bottle top and a permanent pen and just drew some eye markings on the inside. And then I can glue the back of the eye, stick it in place. Now it dramatically changes a puppet's expression if you use eyelids. So they're completely optional. On my sample puppet I made just a tiny hint of an eyelid which I placed at the side. You will change the expression if you decide to go over the top. You can make the puppet look across if it's facing downwards. So it's entirely up to you. I'm going to glue mine on at this angle. So I've just cut a semicircle from my piece of carrier bag and I'm going to glue the back of it. Just carefully press it around the side of the bottle top. And then because I would rather disguise the edges of my bottle top so it looks less like what it really is. I'm also going to add another strip which is going to go around that edge. So I'm just going to glue that. Just going to stick it down like this. So it has a slightly textured appearance. With a few folds. So it's not too flat and perfect. Something like that. So that's my eye on one side. I'm going to do exactly the same with the other one on the other side. So now we have both eyes on our puppet head. Um, and I'm just going to add a little more detail with the permanent marker. Just at the side here, but you can draw whatever you like onto yours. Um, when we get further ahead and we're making feet then I'm going to add a little bit more yellow decoration. The same material that we use for the feet. So that's one almost finished puppet head and we're ready to move on to the body. 
Okay, so we're ready to move on to the puppet's body. To construct the body, we use a series of cardboard discs in different sizes. So the sizes of the discs that you use will depend on the size of the puppet head that you've made. So there's no magic formula for calculating this. I just estimated the sizes I needed to create a body in the shape I wanted for my puppet. But just as a guide, I'm going to show you these discs. These are the ones which I used on my puppet, the dimensions that I used. So I had four 16 centimeter discs, three 14, one six centimeter, one nine centimeter, and two 12.5. So I had 11 discs in total in my puppet. And again, just as a guide, this is how I laid them out. So I started with a six, followed by a nine, two 12.5s, two 14s, four 16 centimeters, and then a 14. So you can see that the body shape starts quite narrow at the neck and then it comes outwards and then ever so slightly tucks in again at the bottom before we attach the feet. So you'll need to cut the discs from your cardboard box card. Um, if you have a compass and you'd like to use the compass, you can measure quite accurately to cut them. If you don't have a compass or compasses are not your thing, um, then you can draw around anything circular that is going to be roughly the right shape. So you can find cups, glasses, bowls, tin cans, anything like that to give you roughly the size of circles that you need. So draw around those onto cardboard box card and cut out your circles like this. When you have all of your circles cut out, you're going to need to make some holes in them. So if you've been using a compass, you will already have a center point marked. If you've been drawing around cups and bowls, then you won't do. Um, it's up to you if you choose to measure I'm not a big fan of measuring, I prefer to just estimate the center about here. And I'm going to take my bradle, or you can use your nail or your skewer, and make that hole through the center. And then you also will need another hole here, which will be at the back, and one either side, like this. If you start by doing this on a smaller one, then it's a good idea to lay your smaller disc top of the larger one. By eye, just check that you've got an even border all the way round, and then you can mark your centre like so. And then either side and at the back. And make those a little bit bigger. So all of your discs need to have the center, the back, and each side. So you need to repeat that for every disc. So next we need to cover our cardboard discs. Although most of us are cutting back on using plastics nowadays, I think many of us will still have the odd carrier bag or bin bag lurking under the sink. So this is a fairly good use. Um, for one of those, if you don't have or you'd rather not use, you can substitute for a piece of fabric, an old shirt would work well, or a t-shirt, something like that, or even tissue paper or paper, although obviously the paper options won't last quite so long. So what we need to do is to lay your cardboard disc on top of the black. My penguin has about two thirds black feather plumage, and about a third white. So I'm going to hold it steady and I'm going to cut around the edge, I would say roughly three centimeters. Doesn't need to be very neat or very accurate. When you finish cutting, fold your circle in half 
and in half again. This is just to find the middle point, which is here. So then open out to half, and then I am going to just judge by eye where to cut out the third. I'm not a big fan of measuring. You can measure if you prefer, but I'm just going to cut like that. Then when I open, this is our black piece, and this piece we've cut out, we're going to use as a template in just a minute. So that's quite important. So now we need to glue on our piece of black. At this stage, if you have Yoohoo glue, it's a good idea to use it. It does give a stronger bond, um, but Pritt stick is fine. We're going with the Pritt stick option because it's the simplest. So glue all over your cardboard disc. And most importantly, glue around the edge thoroughly. And when you've glued, you need to remember that this will be the back of your puppet where we made this hole. The space at the front here has no holes. So I'm going to put the black piece on facing forwards like that. Press it down. And most importantly, I'm going to press around the edges to hold that downwards. So now we need to cut the white piece. And for that, we're going to use the third, which we cut out of black. So I'm laying it on the top of my white material. And I'm gonna cut just slightly bigger so that we get a little overlap. And then we need to glue this into the space. So because we've got an overlap, I'm just going to do the edges again. And glue onto here. Again, make sure it's stuck to the edge of the cardboard disc. Like that. So it's being pulled downwards. So you need to repeat this with each of your discs and leave your glue to dry for a few minutes um, before you do anything else to them. So I have one here, which I made earlier, which has dried a little bit. So I'm just going to show you, we need to re-pierce all of these holes, which is why we want our glue to dry. If the glue's not dry, we might be moving or black and white material. So I'm just going to re-pierce like this. Check they're all visible. And then we need to cut the fringe. So this is, I think, a fun part. Um, I'm gonna use my smaller scissors for this, but it's okay if you only have one pair of scissors handy. And then I'm just going to cut all the way round And you're going to continue until the whole of your disc is cut into a fringe and do the same for all of your discs, like this. When you finish cutting the fringes on your discs, they will look like this. If you would like the fringe to be a little denser, then you can cut an extra strip Cut fringes along the bottom, like this one. Glue along the straight edge, and then you can stick this on top of your existing fringes, like so. And it's a little bit thicker and a bit denser. Next, we need to make some spaces to go in between our cardboard discs. So, if you peek inside here, hopefully you can see she has these beads which separate each cardboard disc. So they act as a spacer and they are also what makes this kind of movement possible in this type of puppet. So if we weren't in lockdown and this was a professional puppet make, I would probably be using either a wooden bead or a piece of shaped plastazote, but 
In our lockdown version, we're going to make some beads from tin foil like this. Now tin foil comes in different thicknesses according to which brand it is, where you buy it, etc. Um, I would say the foil I have here is pretty average and I've used pieces which are 20 centimetres by 15. Um, you might want to vary it according to the type of foil you have. You will need one bead to go in between each disc. The smallest disc attaches directly to the puppet's head. After that, you'll need one bead in between. So I have 11 discs and 10 beads. You're going to need your bradle or your nail or your skewer, etc. And a piece of tin foil roughly to this size. So the first thing to do is to scrunch your tin foil together like this. It's not a good idea to fold it. If you fold it, you're making it very flat and we don't want flat, we need some shape. So I've just scrunched it like this to make it more manageable. And then you just start by wrapping one end around your bradle or skewer. And then you just continue to go round and round like so. You can squash the edges a little bit as you go to make it more bead-like. So I'm pressing it in to make it fairly dense. It doesn't have to be absolutely rock hard, but it needs some substance. You don't want it to still be squashy. So I will press it to there. I'm going to take it off and mould it a little bit more into a rounded shape. You can, if you like, roll it around the tabletop. This smooths it off nicely, presses it together quite easily. Again, they don't have to be perfect, and the ones you make will probably vary a little bit. But as long as they come out looking something like this, they will do the job on your puppet. So you carry on until you have a full set of beads. So as I said, I need 10 beads for my 11 discs on my puppet's body. Now going to move on to attaching our puppet's head to the discs to make the body. So we're going to do this with some string and we're going to be threading the string through our beads and discs. So just as a little tip, it's a good idea to glue the ends of your string before you start because it will tend to fray as you push it through each disc and become a little bit frustrating as you go through the process. So if you glue each end of your string, set it aside to dry, only takes a few minutes, you'll find it much easier. So I have another piece of string which I glued earlier here and my puppet's head. So the first thing I'm going to do is tie one end of the string to the front loop that we made earlier in the process. It's worth tying several knots just to make sure it can't come undone. Then we're going to thread this through our first disc, our smallest disc. So for my puppet, this is the six centimetre one. Um, you may find it goes straight through easily. If it doesn't, you can poke it through with a pencil or your skewer, etc. So I'm going to pull that all the way through. Make sure before you start that your string is long enough to run through all of the discs and the beads and tie a knot at the top and bottom. So you might want to overestimate, start with a fairly long string because you can always cut it shorter afterwards. Then I'm going to take one bead, thread through the middle, pull that to there. And then I'm going through my second disc. Your beads have probably come out slightly different in size. If they vary dramatically, that's okay, but place the larger beads in the middle of the puppet. 
so sort of halfway down as you do your threading. So there I have my second one. And my next disc. So you get the idea, you continue threading bead and disc all the way down until you get to the bottom. When you've threaded on all of your discs, you need to pull the string so it's taut and then we're going to tie a very tight knot against this lower disc. So we need to keep the string tight to the cardboard. Like this. If there's a big gap between the cardboard and the knot, the discs will be really baggy and will have a very floppy body. So I'm going to go over the top of that knot several times so that it can't pull back through the hole in the cardboard. So I have a fairly large knot here against the cardboard, it can't pull through. If you have a glue gun, this is the perfect opportunity to use it. Glue all around the hole in the cardboard and your knot, and that will hold it there. Um, if you don't have a glue gun, I'm not using a glue gun in this make, I'm still gonna use the good old Pritt stick because it will help. So I'm gluing around there and I'm gluing over my knot. Just rub it in a little bit. So it will help to hold it there. Then to make extra sure, I'm going to tape down my string. Because it's absolutely crucial that this can't come undone because our puppet's body would fall to pieces if it did. And then, as a last precaution, I'm going to take the string the other way and tape it again. That way the string can't possibly pull through the tape because it's going back on itself. When you've done that, you can finally cut your string. And your head is now attached to your body. If we turn our puppet around, you will see that although all the discs are attached, they are all able to spin in different directions. So we don't keep our white pieces at the front. This is the reason we've made the extra holes at the back and the sides. And we will be threading through those in just a minute, um, but we're not quite ready for that part yet. So don't worry at this stage if you're thinking it doesn't line up. It will when we've finished. Next, we're going to make the puppet's feet. So if we have a look underneath here, you can see that they're made up from these large penguin shaped feet and they are attached or they're all in one. This piece of cardboard makes a long rod which comes out at the back. So I've made two of those and that's what I'm going to show you in this next step. Your dimensions might vary according to the size of puppet you're making. Um, but just to give you an idea, this is what I used on my puppet. So the foot itself is nine centimeters long. Uh, the cardboard strip that makes the leg part underneath, 3.5, 23 here. And most importantly, remember what we said from the beginning about the grain of the cardboard. So you need the grain long ways because we don't want any flex and bend in our long strip underneath. That's supporting the underneath of the puppet that's holding the, the body up. So you need to design your foot shape, draw onto a piece of scrap paper like this, and then cut round the edge so you have a paper template. Place it on your cardboard with a nice straight grain, draw around the edge, and cut out. So we have our cardboard foot and leg shape. 
We now need to cover or decorate the foot part. We don't need to decorate from here downwards because that's underneath and it doesn't show. Um, for decorating mine, I used a pair of old split rubber gloves. Um, you don't have to use these. You could paint the feet. You could stick tissue paper or fabric on. Um, it's entirely up to you. As I use the rubber gloves, I'm going to show you how I did it. So first of all, I need to cut them open. I'm going to cut up the long side. I want to leave as large a parts whole as possible to fit the foot onto. So I'm going to cut around the base of the fingers. So I'm going to use this flat part here covering the upper part of my puppet's foot. So I'm going to lay this down and then I'm going to draw around, leaving about a centimetre or so around the edge for our overlap. When your shape's cut out, then you need to take your glue and glue the foot part of your cardboard shape. And then we're going to place it down onto our piece of rubber glove, like so. Then we need to make some cuts around the edges, which will allow us to fold neatly underneath. I'm just going to do that at the tips of the toes. I'm going to cut the shape like this. And very importantly, you need to cut in between the toes. Now we need to glue around the edges. You can glue the rubber glove itself or you can glue onto the foot. We might need to do a little bit of both. Then we just fold these edges over, press them down well. So when you've finished covering the top part of your foot, it will look like this on the underside, covered on the top. So now we need to cover this underneath part. So all we do is place it back down on our remaining piece of rubber glove. And this time I'm going to draw around the edge but with no overlap. So I'm keeping it close to the edge of the foot. And then I'm going to cut that shape out. When your piece is cut out, it's best to test it first before we glue it. It's going to stick underneath here. So we might need to trim it a little bit. We need to trim here. And then we're going to glue, place it on here. And then I'm just going to very lightly do around the edges of my shape. So when it's dry, you might want to just trim these edges so that you've got a nice neat finish. But other than that, that's your puppet's foot covered. Now on my other puppet, I'll show you one I made earlier. My rubber gloves happen to be two-tone yellow. So for this one, I then cut some shapes out of this stuck on to here. So that's another option if you're using the rubber gloves. As further decoration, I've added some drawn details here. You can do this with a permanent pen. Just draw onto the top like this. Um, or you can use an ordinary biro, works quite well. Um, or of course you can stick 
on fabric or some pieces of paper. I've also cut from the rubber glove and added some shapes onto her beak and around here. But again, you could cut these from coloured envelopes or shapes from some junk mail or the cereal boxes, etc. Just to add a little colour and a little bit more detail. Now we're just going to lay the puppet's feet aside for a few moments while we add a string which runs through the discs and down the back. So this is the first part of our attachments which will stabilise all the discs and prevent them from spinning. And it helps if we put this one in now before we attach the feet. So again, I've cut my piece of string, plenty of length to run all the way through and I've glued the ends as we did earlier and I'm going to knot it several times through the wire loop which is towards the back. So this is the loop that we haven't used yet. So I'm going to knot that three times to make sure that it can't come undone. Now you could use a rubber band for this stage. If you have a rubber band which is long enough or two which you can tie together, you can cut them so they're single strips and use them for this. I'm going to use string for this step and I will use rubber bands for the other two holes so that you get to see both options demonstrated. So once we've tied it to the back loop, we're just going through each hole at the back of each disc. When you've threaded your string or rubber band or if you have sewing elastic that would also be great for this part. All the way through we need to knot it at the base in the same way we did the central string. The thing we need to remember is that if you've used string rather than elastic or rubber band there's no flex in it so it needs to be loose enough that our puppet can still lean forwards like this. It's a reason that using something stretchy is better. The string will be slightly baggy but the reason I'm using it is because it might be all that people have at the moment in lockdown. If you've got a rubber band or some sewing elastic that would be best. So if it's string make sure it's long enough to give you enough flex that you're not restricting the body movement and then you're just going to tie it off in the same way that we tied the centre string. So we're going to make a series of knots on top of each other, glue it, tape it down. Again if you have a glue gun perfect time to use it. Secure your string down with glue gun glue, it won't be going anywhere. But we can still manage with our print stick and tape, it should be fine. So next we're going to look at attaching the feet. If you have two puppeteers to operate your puppet, you would be able to stick the feet and legs side by side. So one person's hand can operate one foot, and your other puppeteer's hand can operate the other foot. Um, I'm by myself during lockdown, so I am the only puppeteer. So I have overlapped them like this, so they join at the back, and I'm able to puppeteer them with one hand, while my other hand is on the puppet's head, like so. So I've now marked the base with lines where my legs are going to go, and thoroughly gluing in those spaces. And I'm going to place the legs like this, just gluing the overlap as well. Press down and always a good idea to tape over the top. So when you've glued and taped, your feet and legs should be firmly attached like this underneath and sticking out at the front like so. 
and we have just two more steps to go to finish your puppet make. So we now need to make the wings. The best way to do this is to start by drawing a shape for your wing onto scrap paper to make a template. It's important to remember that we need some space at the top for our overlap. So we're going to glue in this section. So probably from here down to here, this will disappear onto one of the discs and this much of your wing will stick out on the side of the puppet. So just make sure you've factored in some space at the top. So draw your design onto scrap paper, cut it out and you'll have a template shape like this. I've used the rubble sacks which I used for the plumage on the head because it's a little bit thicker and stronger. I've glued two layers together to make it even thicker. If you're using standard bin bag, you could glue more layers than that. Just experiment with whatever you have. Otherwise, thin card works very well. We wouldn't want anything too heavy for the wings because it's going to flop straight down and not have that lovely secondary movement which we get in the wings when the body is moving. So when you have your template, lay it on top and it's a little bit difficult to draw onto this rubble sack so I cut mine just by holding it very carefully and cutting all around the edge. When you've done that you have a wing like this. So all you need to do is glue that top section. Again, if you have the Yoohoo glue, use it for this. If not, then we'll go with the print stick. And then with my puppet, I glued the wings onto the third disc down, third from the top. And just stick it in. a little time to dry. One of the lovely things about using the layers of rubble sack glued together is that you can manipulate the fabric or the material between your fingertips slightly and get it to curl and bend like this. I will leave that to dry for a few minutes and then do the same on the other side. We've now reached the final stage in our puppet make and this is to run an elastic or possibly a string up through these discs at the side to further stabilise those, stop them spinning side to side. So this time I'm going to use my rubber bands. Again, if you have sewing elastic, that's perfect. I would advise you use that. If you have long rubber bands, those will be better than what I have. Mine are short, so I'm going to join them in the middle. So I've cut these two in half. I've already tied one knot at the end of this one. I'm going to tie another knot. When you're knotting rubber bands, you do have to pull them very tight so they can't bounce undone again. When that knot is secure, you just need to go from the bottom and start to thread through the side holes in your disc. Now this will be a little bit fiddly because everything else is in place. But if you poke it with a pencil or your nail or skewer, you can pull that through. And then you're just going to gradually work your way up through every hole and if you're using rubber bands that have been cut in half go as far as you can with one and then make a knot in between the discs to join the second one when you run out. If you're using string then remember what we did for the string at the back and you need to allow for your puppet to flex side to side so don't pull your string too tight so gradually thread through keep going until you reach the last disc 
and you are through to your puppet's head. So after you finish threading your rubber band, your elastic or your string through the top disc, all you do is tie it in a nice tight knot on the wire loop at the back of the head here. If you're worried about your rubber band, if that's what you've used, showing too much, you can just glue a little bit of the black material over the top to hide it. Then you repeat the same process on the other side and that should complete your puppet making process. Thanks so much for watching and happy making everyone.